Hello everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York campus of Hack, and welcome back to my Biology 121 Anatomy and Physiology 1 course. This is podcast 1.3, Characteristics and Processes of Life. Living things are different from non-living things in many ways. We can identify six of the most important life processes found in the human body that are absent in non-living things. These processes are metabolism, responsiveness, movement, growth, differentiation, and reproduction. Metabolism is described as all of the chemical reactions that occur in the body. Metabolic reactions are diverse, but can be grouped into two major types of reactions, anabolism and catabolism. Anabolism describes chemical reactions that build up larger, complex chemicals from smaller, simpler chemical building blocks. These reactions can also be called anabolic reactions. The cellular synthesis or formation of new complex carbohydrate sugars or proteins are examples of anabolism. Catabolism is the opposite of anabolism. Catabolic reactions break down large complex chemicals into small simple chemical building blocks. All of the digestive reactions occurring along the digestive tract that break down complex carbohydrates into simple sugars and proteins into amino acids are examples of catabolic reactions. Responsiveness, the second life process, is the ability of the body to detect and react to changes in its external or internal environment. Any change in the external environment outside the body or internal environment inside the body is called a stimulus. The body is adapted to respond to many different types of stimuli. Examples of stimuli include visual, auditory or sound, olfactory or smell, chemical, pressure, touch, temperature, and more. Many of the body's cells are adapted to respond to specific types of stimuli. Muscle cells respond by contracting and shortening their length, which allows body structures to move. Nerve cells respond by producing action potentials, or nerve impulses, which are fast-moving electrical signals allowing nerve cells to communicate with each other or other excitatory cells. The third life process is movement, which is the motion of the entire body or any of its components such as organs, individual cells, and internal cellular structures called organelles. Many organs contain layers of smooth muscle, which can contract to propel substances through the organ. White blood cells can move out of the bloodstream and into the surrounding tissues where an infection is occurring. Inside the cell, secretory vesicles can move to the cell's plasma membrane in order to release their chemical products. The fourth life process is growth, which can involve an increase in the overall size of the body due to the increasing size of body cells an increase in the overall number of cells through cell division, or both. Growth can also occur through the accumulation of materials outside of a cell. For example, the mineral matrix that is built up between bone cells allows the bone to grow longer and wider. The fifth life process is differentiation, which is where a cell becomes increasingly specialized as it matures and takes on a specific shape, structures, and functions. 
Cells begin their lives as stem cells, which are precursor or ancestor cells, characterized by having a general and undifferentiated state and the ability to engage in active cell division. In chapter 19, The Blood, we will learn more about the process of differentiation occurring in the red bone marrow, which leads to the development of all of the many types of blood cells. The sixth and final life process is reproduction, which can involve the creation of new cells through cell division during tissue growth, replacement or repair, or it may refer to the formation of a new individual human being. If any of these life processes stops occurring, the result is cellular and tissue death, which can lead to the overall demise of the individual. In clinical terms, death of the human body is indicated by loss of the heartbeat, lack of spontaneous breathing, and loss of brain functions. Thanks for watching, and please feel free to contact me by email at rjswatsk at hack.edu if you have any questions or comments about the course.